Hey guys, welcome back to the Thinkorswim tutorial series. In today's video, we'll be covering how to create a dynamic watch list inside of Thinkorswim. Now, for those of you not aware, a dynamic watch list is basically just a scanner or a screener turned into a watch list. Instead of you manually typing in the stocks you want to keep track of on a daily basis, we're instead creating a watch list that is constantly updating to show you only those stocks that match your scan criteria. This scan criteria could be as simple as stock price, scanning only for companies that trade between $10 and $100 a share. We could then narrow this down even further, only showing companies that have traded over a million shares so far today. We could also incorporate fundamental filters, searching for companies with a current ratio greater than 1 or a cash flow ratio less than 15. If you're a technical trader, we could also incorporate study or pattern filters, creating a filter to show companies currently oversold in the RSI and have had a MACD cross over the last 5 minutes. Now, those are just examples, but you can scan for practically any set of criteria that's important to you. Again, the dynamic watch list is simply a scanner that will constantly update with stock that match your criteria and hopefully save you a lot of time later down the line. Now, over the next few minutes, we're going to go through creating a couple different watch lists, going through a few different examples. But if you guys really want to master this thing, you are really going to need to practice this a bit on your end and find criteria that's actually important to you. Now, jumping right into creating the dynamic scans, there are really two different ways to do this. The first is by finding your watch list on the left hand side over here in the side panel and going ahead and clicking on the name. In my case, the name of this watch list is Bull Scan, so we'll go ahead and click on that. From there, you're going to look down a little bit for the button marked Create a Scan Query. Once we click on it, it's going to go open up this little window right here. From there, we can then make the watch list and start to add our filters. Now, I'm not a huge fan of this method because it's kind of limited on space. Since it's so small, I can't really see all the filters as I create them. If you come over here and you click on add a filter, stock filter, you can see now I can't see that other filter I just had before. I've got to scroll up to see it. The second way and my preferred way is we're going to go ahead and cancel out of this and we're going to come up here to the scan tab and make sure we're on the stock hacker up here at the top. From this page, you can see I've got a lot of room up here to actually see all the filters that I've created. And we're going to go ahead and refresh this, click on the three little lines, and we're going to reset it, start from the beginning. Now let's go ahead and jump right into it and create a few example filters here. Since I already have three up here that are all stock filters, we'll use these, and we're going to start with stock price. Let's say we're looking for stocks that trade between $10 and $100 a share. So we're going to go ahead and change this filter to the last traded price. From there, we're going to change the min box to $10, and we're going to change the max box to $100. Next up, we've already got volume as a filter here, so we'll leave it and we're going to put a million shares as the minimum. And we'll go ahead and leave the max blank and we're going to come over here to the last stock filter. We're going to change that from percent change and we're going to go to market cap in millions. Now, in our case, we're not looking for micro cap companies. In fact, we're looking for anything that's greater than a small cap. So in our case, we'll do 1 billion as the minimum, which is 1000 millions. And again, we won't have a max over here. I don't care if it's a $2 trillion company. I just don't want to trade any micro caps in this case. Now we could end it there. We could just hit scan and see what companies today met our criteria. But I want to go a step further because if you see here, I've got 602 results on this watch list, which is way too many. We're going to go ahead and start adding some other filters. And let's do a study filter because that's the most complicated for most people. So we're going to go ahead and click on add a filter up here. Come on down to study. From there, we can see we added a new filter right here, study filter, and it defaults to ADX crossover. So we'll go ahead and click on that. For this study filter, we're going to go ahead and create a RSI filter looking for stocks that are oversold in the RSI. So under 30. So we'll come down here to popular studies, come over here to the right and click on RSI scan. From there, we're going to change this from greater than to less than, and it's going to be less than 30 in this case. And if you see over here on the right hand side, it's a D for day. We're going to leave that as a daily aggregation. But if you ever wanted to change that to a one minute aggregation, two minutes and so on, this is where you can do that. Now we talked about it before, so we're going to put this one in here, MACD. So we're going to come over here to study again. We're going to see that ADX crossover pops up once again. We're going to go ahead and click on that. Now some of the studies you're searching for or some of the filters you want to create are not going to be pre-made and we're going to have to create it ourselves. So what we're going to do is come on down here to custom. We're going to see that the box pops up here and it defaults to ADX crossover once again. We're going to go ahead and delete that out of there so we can start fresh. If you're a coding savant, you can come up here to the ThinkScript editor and type in the code yourself. Since I am too dumb to understand any type of coding, I'm going to come over here to the condition wizard. And from there, I'm going to come down here to add a condition. Now, in our case, we were going to do the MACD crossover. So we're going to come up here to select a condition. We're going to do a study condition. We're going to type in MACD. We're going to go ahead and click on it to add it. And we're looking for a MACD crossover. So we're going to say when it crosses above, and in our case, it is crossing above the MACD once again. So we're going to come over here and type in MACD again, click on it. Now, the only thing we have to change on this is changing it from the value line to the average line. 
So again, what we're saying we're searching for is a company that has recently had the value line of the MACD cross above the average line. And in our case, we're gonna say it's happened within the last five minutes. So I'm about to change that aggregation period from a daily aggregation to a one minute aggregation. And since I'm looking for a crossover to have happened in the last five minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and change this from one bar to five bars for five minutes. From there, we'll go ahead and hit save. And we gotta to remember to change that aggregation period to one minute. So now it's looking back five minutes. And now we just need to hit okay. Now we've got all the filters up here at the top. We're looking for companies trading between $10 and $100 have traded over a million shares so far today, have a market cap greater than a billion dollars, are currently oversold on the RSI, and there's been a MACD crossover within the last five minutes. Now, I don't think there's gonna be any results, but we'll go ahead and hit scan. And what do you know? There are actually five results on our list here. Now that's a lot less than 600, which we had previously. Ideally, you're only gonna have stocks pop up on this watch list when they meet all of your criteria and you're ready to go into that trade right then and there. So we want to make those scans as specific as possible because we don't want to waste our time looking through a long list of companies. Now remember, the whole point of this video was to turn this into a dynamic watch list. So what we need to do is come up here to the three lines in the top right hand corner. We're going to go ahead and click on them and go to save scan query. In our case, we're going to go ahead and name this test one and we're going to save it. Now that we saved it, from now on, we can go ahead and open it up as a pre-made watch list. So what we're going to do is come over here to bull scan. That was our current watch list that we have open. We're going to come down to personal where all of our watch lists are at. And we're going to see test one with a little purple circle next to it right here. That means it's a dynamic watch list or scanner watch list, whatever you want to call it. And when we click on it, this watch list is going to be constantly updating itself, only showing us those companies that meet our criteria. Now, when I say constantly updating, it's not like every single second. It's more like every three to four minutes, but that's pretty much good enough for me. Now, let's go ahead and create one more. In this case, we're going to be scanning for volatility. So let's go ahead and refresh this, come up here to the three lines and reset. Say yes. Now, starting from the beginning, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're looking for stocks within a certain range. We're going to say anything over 20 bucks and less than 500 in this case. We're still looking for liquid underlying, so we'll still put a million shares as the minimum. And I still don't want to trade companies with a market cap less than a billion, so I'm still going to throw that on there. 1,000 millions. Now, the next one we're going to add is actually going to be IV rank. So me as an options trader, a lot of times I'm looking for companies with really high implied volatility relative to where they've been in the past year. So one way to do that is by looking for IV rank. So we're going to come up here to add a filter. We're going to add a study filter. We're going to come over here to study ADX crossover. We'll come down to volatility. And luckily enough, this one's pre-made for us. We're going to come down here to IV percentile, which is actually mislabeled in this platform. IV percentile is IV rank. And we're going to say we're looking for companies with at least a 30% rank and up to 100. Now, the actual implied volatility is actually important to me as well. So I'm going to say I only want to look for companies with implied volatility greater than 35%. So we'll come up here to add a filter again. We're going to do a study filter. We're going to come on over to ADX crossover. Come on down to custom. We're going to delete that filter that's already in there. Add a condition once again. This one is going to be a study. We're going to type in implied for implied volatility. And we wanted that implied volatility to be greater than 35, I believe is what I said. And remember, this is expressed in points. So there's going to be 0.35 is 35%. And we're going to say within one bar, we'll go ahead and save that. We'll hit OK. Now when we hit scan, it's only going to show us those companies that are trading between $20 and $500 a share. Over a million shares traded so far today. The company is worth at least a billion dollars, has an IV rank greater than 30, less than 100, and its implied volatility is currently greater than 35%. Let's go ahead and hit scan and see what we find. And there we go. Still a very large list of companies. We've got over 109 companies in our watch list right now, but we could filter this down looking for maybe specific industries. I'm pretty heavy in tech right now, but I have nothing in real estate. So let's say we wanted to narrow this list down even further. And in this case, we're going to focus on only real estate companies. We're going to come up here to scan in all stocks. We're going to come down to buy industry. We're going to come on over to real estate and we're going to say select all real estate and hit scan one more time. Now, unfortunately, there are no real estate companies that met our criteria. So let's flip that around. We're going to go to utilities. All right. Nothing in utilities either. There we go. So we just selected materials. Now these are all materials company, all eight of them, and they all meet our criteria. So let's say I wanted to save this as well as one of my watch lists. We'll come up here to three lines again, save scan query, move that into center, and we'll name this our materials high volatility watch list. 
And again, once we save it, it's always gonna be over here under our watch list, personal list, and we can see it right here, materials high volatility. And just like before, this will be constantly updating, only looking for those high vol materials companies out there in the marketplace right now. Now for me personally, without these dynamic scanners or dynamic watch lists, I would have no idea what I'm trading on a daily basis. So for me, they're pretty much a lifesaver, but it's definitely important to make it as specific as possible and make sure you really understand what you're looking for. All we did is go through a few examples and this should give you a nice head start to creating some dynamic watch list for yourself. However, you are gonna need to do these on your own and definitely get some practice with it. With a little bit of practice, I promise you'll get the hang of it. And if you guys do have any trouble creating something specific, you can go ahead and leave it in the comments and I'll try and help out as best I can. I will say that you can pretty much scan for anything, but if you don't see it as a pre-made filter inside of there, you're gonna have to script it out yourself or copy a script from someone else. Like I said, when it comes to ThinkScript, I am an idiot, so do not ask me how to create a, a ThinkScript. For me, a lot of times, I'm just gonna throw in a nice little quick Google search or I'll come up here to the chat room and I'll come down here to ThinkScript Lounge. These guys are insanely helpful. I don't think any of them actually work at TD Ameritrade, but they really know their stuff. If we were to actually scroll up here, you'd probably see a script. Well, this is a bad example. There are no scripts in here. But like I said, this chat room is full of super helpful people. So if you ever run into a roadblock on writing your script, just throw your question in here and I'm sure somebody could help you out. But we'll go ahead and end it there. If you guys did find this video helpful, please leave it a like to help out the channel. And like always, if you guys have any questions about Thinkorsum at all or run into any trouble with creating your own watch list and need some help, leave it down below in the comments and I'll answer them all as best I can. Unless it's a ThinkScript, please do not leave any ThinkScript questions. I will not be able to help. But let's all try to make some money this week and I'll catch you all in the next video.